did it. Right? And what I learned was when I was working on the exoskeleton, it turns out when I started on that project, I was fortunate enough to get my second son. Okay? He was just born. By the time we were able, or I was able, to get onto the robot and just move one step like this, not even walk, we, we didn't put the other leg on, just one, and it was all braced like this. For us to get that with confidence, okay, Sebastian, my son, was already jumping up the couch, running around the house, and so forth, okay? And we had a team of over 20 engineers working on that problem. My son was only an infant with one brain, and he was able to do all of that. So the human is incredibly adaptive. So what happens is, if you have a skill that a robot can do, and you don't use a robot to do it, you are wasting one of your most important resources. Because the human being is going to adapt. Another example that I'll give you is this. Here, same thing, in the automotive industry. You could have a father that's sitting there putting wheels on the lug, on the wheel, in the car manufacturer. And he makes a nice living. He has a good retirement. He buys a house for his kids, everything else. His kid's going to sit there and go, ah, well, why should I finish high school? Why should I go to college? I'm just going to put wheels in cars. Right? Why not? His dad made a good living, and he can do that. And that's fine. But let's say the company does a wise thing and sit there and go, hey, I can have a robot put the wheels on and put the lugs on. At that point, yeah, that person, right, who's the father, if you lay him off and you just fire him, yeah, he's going to be hurt. No doubt, one generation is going to be hurt. But that son's going to sit there and go, hey, that job's not there anymore. I can't put wheels in the car. What choice does he have? He either starves and become homeless, right, or he learns to do a better skill. We are extremely adaptive, right? So if you're if your number one resource is a human resource, and you have them do labor that a machine can do, you are wasting one of your most important resources. And that's where, now of course, I'm a roboticist, so that's my pitch. I, I've been studying that forever. That didn't just come out. <laughs> but no, but, but there are rationale for that. I mean, it's a long way to answer your question, but oh, there's tons of stuff. Anything, rolling cigarettes, whatever Indonesia manufactures, right? If a robot can do it. Yes, yes, I do understand. There's huge labor force. But that's, not, not to say that, but then now it's the job of the government to, to be creative, right? Yeah. I didn't say that, please. Yeah, uh, regarding this. Thank you, it's very interesting uh, discussion. Regarding this, I think uh, one thing that we need to uh, understand, you know, how good your invention is, uh, how good your knowledge, and how good your, uh, you apply it, but the most important, how can you sell it? Uh, sell. This is, yeah, sell, uh, sell your products. Uh, uh, like uh, Steve Jobs, you are good at selling, that in, in, um, uh, he's good at selling his good, uh, invention too. But when you talk to Indonesian government, so they think, uh, they think about the labor force. In, or a padat career. So actually, we need to make a comparison. Why Japanese people who already went to robot system, as well as in Korea, Taiwan, and, uh, and, uh, and everybody else, uh, other country, but their unemployment rate was very low. So actually, this system doesn't affect doesn't take away the job from human. Right. Yeah, I think that's uh, that's the thing that we need to uh, to make sure that Indonesian government understand about this. Oh. The other thing I think is uh, entrepreneurship that they need to understand because by building your entrepreneurship skill, then you'll be able to invent more stuff to uh, to innovate. The other things that I think that we can implement in Indonesia right now is the solar power. Yeah. This is because you know one of the um, member here saying that we have um, electricity problem. That's a problem. Yeah. So I I, I think uh, that's the thing that we need to market to Indonesia. Thank you. Well, I mean, I think that was a comment. I don't know if that was a question. No, no, no I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, I agree.
Twenty for Indonesia, like development country, in terms of uh, human resource, to use all this uh, uh, everybody and people to involve in the development. When you using robot, is it going to cut off the ge generation? And it's not going to cut off generation, but it's going to be seen somewhere that everybody not get involved. Like that's what I can say. But what what the consequence or the concern is? How do you still using the technology, the robot that you implement that, but how do you pro protect the people that are missing that? Yeah, That's no, what you're missing in that presentation. Yeah, yeah, no, no, it's not a matter of... Okay, okay, so I, I, I think... Yeah, Thank you. Yeah, so I, I, think, I think a lot of people miss, miss quite a bit about the robotics that goes through. Okay, and it ends up being as a policy. policy. Why, is, why it was successful in Japan Okay, in terms of the implementation of the robotics, is that when the robot was in place, which is different, and it didn't work in the U.S. either. Yeah. And this was the problem in the U.S. When the problem, the problem in the U.S. was the union stepped in. That's, <laughs> you know, then you have to treat robots like a human being, and then it ends up being, oh, well, then it's just an expensive might as well have the human. But in Japan, it was very different. So you realize, okay, so let's say I invent the robot. Okay, I make the robot. Okay? So let's say we have the robot that is to roll the cigarette, okay? Personally, I don't smoke, so I don't even know how to roll the cigarette. So that's the problem. I don't know how to roll the cigarette. But the person that rolled the cigarettes knows how to roll the cigarette. So what you do is you train him to train the robot to roll the cigarette. Now, it's, it's going to be a policy of the company, and it's where Japan happened. So in Japan, what they did was they didn't hide, fire the person. The person was still the expert in the process. What they did was they gave him three robots where they are responsible for. They went through the policy of retraining because human beings can be retrained. Now all of a sudden a person that was rolling the cigarette is now retrained in terms of how he will know if the robot's broken, how if the robot's gonna fix. It's the same way, okay? A generation of blacksmiths, totally out of a job when the car came. Right, because nobody need to replace shoes on the horses anymore. But what happens with the car? You can have a flat tire. Your windshield can be broken. The car seat needs an upholstery that needs to be sewn, that needs to be fixed. Someone needs to paint the car. The car gets in an accident. Robot's not going to last forever. Human labor. You get your finger cut off. It's all over. You're finished. You can't do the job anymore. The robot, finger breaks. You fix it. The robot, who fixes it? The person who lost the finger. Look at how many cars are being serviced. The service industry for the car is much more than the car itself. Business is the same thing with the robot. The robot is a machine. A machine will fail, right? So that is where people, people look at the robot and you look at that one person that has been replaced. That robot needs to be serviced. In Japan, it's just that the efficiency goes up. The efficiency and the quality of the good goes up. That's where you make the money. Right? But what happens is the person, right? it takes three persons to run a single robot. It's just that these three persons can run five robots and their efficiency goes up. And that's what people miss. People miss it because the one that's putting is, yeah, okay. I'm not saying disagree with your opinion. Yeah. Technology. What I'm saying is like how to protect the people that they don't know this. And then they still no, but that's to but that's to that's through education. I mean, it worked in Japan, and that's how it was, right? The robot companies come in, and the robot companies don't come in and just sit there and go, okay, I'm going to take over your job. They sit there and they go, okay. So, like for instance, I come up with a robot and I sit there and go, this.